Every group member receives the same question. Responses are written on the sheet, and the analyst collects the responses. If the ratings are near each other, the next attribute is rated. Then the process is stopped if there is wide differences among the group members. When there are differences in numeric ratings, the analyst asks for the reasons behind their ratings. Some group members may raise considerations others have missed. Group members may see flaws in the logic. Other disagreements are due to value differences. The CIO may emphasize costs more, while the chief medical officer may emphasize ease of use. Better communication may not reduce this type of conflict. The group process is designed to reduce misconceptions and miscommunications, and accepts other conflicts as inherent in the task. After the group completes a discussion of their reasons, then group members are asked to redo their individual rating and proceed to the next attribute. To evaluate the performance of the vendor, the first step is to measure the performance of the vendor on each of the attribute in the group's consensus model. There are three ways to accomplish this. Current users of the system or experts familiar with the systems can be asked to rate the vendors on each of the attributes. Another alternative is to use standard cases and objective measure. In this approach, vendors are provided standardized cases and asked to use their information systems to enter the relevant data the percent of errors, the number of keystrokes before one can enter the data, the time it takes to enter the data, and other similar measures are used to objectively measure the attributes specified by the group for evaluating the vendors. The third approach is to use subjective ratings of the vendor selection committee. Vendors are invited to demonstrate their systems. Members of the vendor selection committee use a system and watch the operations of the system and rate the performance of the vendors on each attribute or criteria. Occasionally, the committee bases its ratings on interviewing others who are currently using the same system. In measuring the performance of the vendors, it is important to use the same procedures for all vendors so that the ratings are comparable. For example, if one set of members rate the performance of one vendor, the same set should rate the performance of the remaining vendors. Care should be taken not to introduce additional sources of bias into the ratings. The scoring is done by first assigning each vendor to one of the levels of the attributes. Here we see that the vendors A, B, and C are being evaluated based on three attributes, ease of use, cost, and reputation. Vendor A is judged to take an average of two minutes to enter the standardized cases. Vendor B, on the other hand, enters the same set of cases in three minutes, and so forth. The next step is to put in the corresponding rating for the level of each attribute and the weight assigned to each attribute. In this example, cost is the most important attribute with a value of 0.4. Ease of use is the next most important attribute, and reputation is considered least important among the three attributes. Note that the weights are organized so that they sum the one. Vendor A takes two minutes to enter the standardized cases. This is best in ease of use, and therefore is assigned a weight of 100. Vendor C does the worst on this attribute, and is assigned a weight of zero. As is, Vendor A has a system that is easy to use, but the reputation is not as good as Vendor B. When all scores are put in, we are ready to calculate the overall score for each vendor. For each vendor, the overall score is calculated as a weighted sum of the ratings. Thus, for Vendor A, the rating of 100 on ease of use is multiplied by the weight for ease of use. The rating 70 on cost is multiplied by 0.4 which is the weight for cost. The rating zero for reputation is multiplied by the weight for reputation. The overall score is the sum of the weighted rating. In this example, vendor A has the highest score. The analyst writes a report showing how various vendors did on each attribute and what scores were assigned to them. This report contains several different topics including who participated, what was the meeting process, what was the consensus scoring procedure, in particular what attributes and attribute levels were included in the decision, and how is each attribute level rated and weighted. The report also shows the performance of each vendor and the overall score for the vendors. The report ends with the conclusions and the next step in the process. The report is distributed to group members as well as widely to all employees so that they can see the logic behind the selection of a particular vendor. Vendor selection is time consuming and at times frustrating. After many product demonstrations, reference checks, and site visits, 
the organization may be left more confused than before the start. This section has provided a group process to help the organization come to a consensus. This structured process engages a large number of clinicians and managers in the process. It is structured so that information collected at different stages from different people are put to appropriate use. It is also organized to increase internal communication and produce a consensus around the vendor selection process. In this approach, what matters is the process. The numbers help keep track of the importance of different issues, but what really matters is the process of forming consensus within the organization. And the procedures described here helps the organization come together on an important decision.